Joining me now for more analysis of the election is our managing editor, Kim Lawton, and Jerome Sokolowski, editor-in-chief of Religion News Service. Welcome to you both. Jerome, what happened last Tuesday? <laughs> well, from a religion perspective, Bob, Donald Trump captured 81% of the white evangelical vote. As, as you just mentioned, um, that was key because if you take away the evangelical share of the vote, which is about a quarter, Hillary Clinton would have won by a landslide. Now, it's 81% is slightly more than Mitt Romney got, but, but keep in mind that this time around, there were some evangelical leaders who were telling their followers not to vote for Donald Trump. It was a really interesting debate within the evangelical community. I think there were more debates and divisions than the 81% the figure would really indicate. But there was a lot of discussion about some of the, the things that Donald Trump said, that, w that women and, and African Americans and immigrants and others found insulting. And, and there was concern in the evangelical community about some of his you know, his morality, his, his behavior. And people were saying, well, it was the evangelicals who were concerned during the Clinton administration about some of Bill Clinton's activities. Why did Donald Trump not have the same concern? So it was an interesting conversation. In the end, a lot of the evangelicals clearly did vote for Trump, but I don't think it was a really strong, enthusiastic support for many of them. Mm -hmm. Jerome, are the, are the evangelicals now in a position to say to people in government, we got you here, now pay off? <laughs> well, they're, they're not only in a position to say that, but they are saying it. I was at a couple of press conferences on Wednesday uh, here in Washington with some of the evangelical political figures who were saying, essentially, Donald Trump owes us. He has to make good on his promises. They may be expecting Donald Trump to do that. I have a feeling they may also be hoping that Mike Pence, who was uh, a choice in their favor, is, is, it will be whispering in, in the president's ear. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to watch because we've seen this happen in the past before in other administrations where the evangelicals came out. This time around there was a big mobilization from some of these groups. The political groups really did a big get out the vote push. Um, but it's happened in the past and then the administrations haven't necessarily followed through or done exactly what they had hoped. So it will be interesting to see if Donald Trump does, especially on some of the issues that were really of top concern for them, like abortion, like Supreme Court justices and judges, and even gay marriage. And, but Donald Trump will also be getting pressure from other quarters as well. So I'm, I'm going to be watching really closely to see what he does. Have evangelicals discovered from their past experience of the last few years that getting too far into politics can be a big problem? It certainly does turn off uh, a number of people. Uh, however, uh, you f there were a lot of people this time around who heard uh, anti-abortion messages from the pulpit and, and that influenced their votes. There were many people who, who really viewed Hillary Clinton as a quote-unquote murderer. It's hard to discount the level of dislike for Hillary Clinton in some of these conservative religious communities, conservative Catholics and evangelicals, both white evangelicals. It, it, there was a sense of mistrust of her. They didn't like her and her abortion stands, um, some of her other positions. They, they just had this really deep dislike of her, which is interesting. This is part of the, the, the evangelical thing is a part of a, of, a, of a maybe bigger swath of the country that feels that the prosperity of the last few years hasn't come to them, indeed has hurt them. Factories have closed down, they don't have jobs. They really feel like an abandoned minority. And so the vote Tuesday, that vote was a protest vote, a big protest vote, a demand for change. It, and I think there, there is a sense of alienation, economic alienation, but also cultural mm -hmm. alienation for some of these conser religious conservatives feeling that the broader culture doesn't share their values on things like gay marriage, on abortion, some of the other stuff going on in pop culture. They feel like maybe the government leaders don't listen to them. They pay attention to other folks, but not to them. And they're, they're worried about their ability to exercise their religion. Um, you know, this religious liberty question that a lot of people talk about was big. So there is a sense of feeling like outsiders. 
But there are other groups that feel like outsiders and are now worried about being outsiders in a Trump administration as well. Muslims, immigrants, um, African Americans, and others are concerned as well, and I'm hearing that from the religious community also. I've had phone calls and other people and talked to several people who've had the same experience, which is that a lot of young people for whom this may have been the first big election were just devastated because Hillary Clinton didn't make it. It depends where you look at for the young people. Yes, I, I, I believe Hillary Clinton got the, the youth vote or the 20-something the, the vote. Um, however, there, there are many young people in rural areas who, who feel left out. They feel like globalization has not brought fruits to them and their families and, and the people around them. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing from some of these folks in the faith community that were disappointed, devastated. I'm hearing them commit themselves to wanting to work harder for their values. Many of them are very upset because they had supported Hillary Clinton for a lot of reasons, but I, I am hearing a lot of saying this is going to galvanize us to work for the values we care about, to take care of the marginalized, to take care of immigrants and refugees, to take care of the least of these is language they use. And so it will be, I'll be watching to see the extent to which they do get involved. How much of this is just the emotion immediately after an election and how much will this uh, encourage people to get involved, to make sure that in the future maybe there are candidates they do like? Because uh, you heard so much about people didn't like, you know, so many of the candidates. Yeah. Many thanks, Kim Lawton of this program and Jerome Sokolowski, Editor-in-Chief of Religion News Service. Thank you.